Greetings and welcome to a very special edition of L.A. Reggae, an anthology created exclusively for yours truly, Roger Steffens and Peter Simon's Reggae Scrapbook. L.A. Reggae was a cable television show that began in 1980, created by my friend and partner, the Trinidadian drummer, producer, director, Chili Charles. And over the course of our 23 years of production, we spoke with some of the most important figures in modern reggae music, and we've excerpted some of the most interesting moments of those interviews for you to enjoy over the next hour or so. We begin with one of the great voices of contemporary reggae roots music, Luciano, in an interview recorded in Hollywood on the roof of the Island Records building on Sunset Strip. This was at the very beginning of Luciano's international career, and he had just made a very controversial appearance in front of the world's press in Jamaica, and I wanted to get behind the scenes of what actually happened. This is an interview recorded in June of 1995. Back in 1982, Chili Charles and I went to a small club in Santa Monica, California, for a sound check with Joseph Hill, the lead singer of Culture. And after the sound check, we interviewed him about a couple of interesting events in his life. One, of course, was the writing of the song Two Sevens Clash, which closed the entire country of Jamaica for an entire day on the 7th of July, 1977. And in the interview, he tells us how some of the prophecies of his song actually came immediately true. And we follow that with a harrowing tale of how he and his friends were mugged on the way home from a groundation in Bull Bay, Jamaica, and how Joseph Hill's life was saved by a two-inch tall Haile Selassie. Peter Tosh was one of the best friends L.A. Reggae ever had. He sat for us a couple of times, first in August of 1981, three months after his old partner in the Whalers, Bob Marley, had passed away. And you'll find his remarks about Bob Marley rather intriguing, I think. And we'll follow that with two excerpts from an interview done in July of 1983, in which Peter talks about the conspiracy to keep reggae music off the air in America and about the multiple plots on his life. Here's a stack of singles by Alton Ellis, which shows the breadth of his work over the past almost 50 years. He is the king of Rocksteady and one of my all-time favorite singers. And in July of 1997 in Long Beach, California, I interviewed him about some of these, and I showed him a strange new disc that had Treasure Isle, Duke Reed's label on it, and Cox and Dodd's name on the same label. These were the two great rivals during the Rocksteady era of the mid-60s, and his response to this was very interesting. He talks at a certain length about the Duchess, Duke Reed's wife, who had been given the estate following her husband's passing. And we also talk about Busby, the man about whom he wrote this song, Dance Crasher, back in 1963. The Heptones were one of the most important groups in rocksteady and reggae history, recording for Cox and Dodd's Studio One between 1966 and 72. And they are Earl Morgan, Barry Llewellyn, and lead singer, bassist, and arranger Leroy Siblis. They stayed together till the late 70s, and in 1994 they had a brief reunion. And they came here to the new home of the archives in July of 94 to tell me about their early days. And this is what the archives looked like a month after we moved in. Yeah. Uh, a, a prime question. Where did the name come from? Well, 